Hi, everyone. So great to be here today. I wanted to, um, you know, just take a moment with you before we do the pitch. We have fantastic pitch participants this year. Each and every one of them have put an awful lot of work into their pitch, and I'm really excited to see what has uh, come to be a lot of practice sessions, some mentoring, and uh, definitely a lot of nerves. So we're all here today. Uh, again, I want to just reiterate how important it is um, that this is a safe place to be able to pitch your business. There's a bigger audience than what there has been in the past, but don't let that be a problem. Absolutely, you guys are bang on. You've been doing fantastic. So my name is Lori Benson and I'm with the ESGS group at EY. And I've had the absolute pleasure to assist our pitch participants this year, along with the support and help of the CGLCC. This is a very important effort that we make together for these participants, these business entrepreneurs, to be able to support getting and gaining customers. And so that's what this is all about. And I think that you'll really find this session fantastic, fun, and full of surprises. And so without taking any more time, I'm going to pass the baton over to Dale to say a few words. And I also just want to do a quick call out, Dale, because your team, Paige and Ryan, have been absolutely fantastic through this whole effort. And I just want to make a big shout out to them and say thank you very much. Well, thank you uh, so much, Laurie, and I couldn't agree with you more. Uh, Ryan and Paige are such awesome colleagues to have. They've put a lot of work into supporting the EY pitch competition this year, and, and certainly uh, I would also like to give a shout out to, to them for their fantastic work. And also, Laurie, to thank you. Thank you for all of the work you have been doing uh, and our friends at EY. Uh, without you, this event, of course, would not be here today. So thank you so much for everything you do. So good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Dale McDermott, and I'm the COO of Canada's LGBT Plus Chamber of Commerce. And it's my pleasure uh, to be your MC for the finale of our 2021 virtual EY pitch competition. We have a jam-packed agenda for you today. Four finalists are competing today. So let's get right into it. Our first finalist will be Jonathan Marriott from Access Can. Jonathan, the floor is yours for 10 minutes. Thank you. Hi, my name is Jonathan and I'm the founder of Access Can. I help provide meaningful access so all of the community can participate. I'm a white cis male in my late 30s, just, and I'm wearing a black top. I'm sitting on the left of the screen and there is a slide deck that's going to appear on the right. An accessible slide deck has also been provided. People will forget what you said, people will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel, Maya Angelou. Accessibility affects all of us. I want to go back to the winter of 2017 when I was still living in London, England, and I met my friend Millie for dinner. Millie meeted, greeted me with, I don't want to eat here. In fact, we can't come here anymore. I can't use the washroom. Although there was an accessible washroom, as it was raining outside, I mean, after all, it is London, people had chained their bikes along the ramp and Millie needed to use the handrails so she could access the washroom. The United Nations recognises people with disabilities as the world's largest minority group. Millie didn't want people in the restaurant to feel uncomfortable and she didn't want to draw attention to herself. Sadly, this is a familiar story for many minority groups. How often have you, as a female, a visible minority, a member of the LGBTQ2S plus community, just to name a few, felt like you've had to compromise or change your behavior due to the apprehension and fear of other people's reactions. And how long are we going to do this for? My late grandmother had a disability and I saw firsthand how she disappeared from her community. 10 years on, the same thing was happening to my friend Millie, except she was 30 and my grandmother was in her 80s. The problem, equitable and dignified treatment is not being provided for all people with disabilities. 
A senior vice president at Wells Fargo Bank, who had a sight impairment, said that she was sick and tired of people moaning, oh, it takes so long to make accessible documents, no one's going to use them. She said, when people say that, I respond by saying, well, that's what they said when they installed female washrooms in the US Senate. Two, there is a lack of understanding about accessibility. Do you know the law doesn't even provide a definition? Three, there are significant barriers preventing meaningful access that are not being addressed. This gives the message, you don't belong here. People will never forget how you made them feel. The news headlines on this slide show recent examples of inequitable treatment people with disabilities face every day. How can these issues be addressed? By taking a structured, holistic approach towards accessibility with the aim to provide meaningful access, ensure all of our community can participate, and to stop discrimination and stigmatization. I was on a webinar recently and someone said, adult change tables in office buildings. I mean, it's highly unlikely who's going to use those. No one in office needs one of them. And I just thought, how do you know that? You have no idea who works in the building, no idea of the user group, no idea of the employees. But what this also shows is that mandated regulations do little, if anything, to address ableism. The accessibility you and your organization provide is a reflection of your culture, values, and commitment to inclusion. People will never forget how you made them feel. In 2018, 25,000 people contacted the Canadian Human Rights Commission. Of those, 1,129 became formal complaints. 52% of these related to accessibility and inequitable treatment. In terms of market size, there are 482,000 commercial buildings in Canada, 2.13 million apartment buildings, and 6 million people with disabilities. In 2017, Statistics Canada reported that 24% of visible minorities with disabilities consider themselves to be disadvantaged in employment because of their disability. Studies have shown that those that offer the most inclusive working environments for people with disabilities achieved an average of 30% lower turnover rate, 30% greater economic profit margins, 28% higher revenue, and twice the net industry income of their peers. Lastly, the Conference Board of Canada estimates that through workplace accommodations alone, 550,000 people with disabilities would be able to work more. This would increase the GDP by 16.8 billion by 2030. People will never forget how you made them feel. So when would a person or business need these services? Although accessibility benefits everyone, target markets for these services are businesses, organizations, federal institutions, property management companies, and landlords. Usually this is in relation to compliance with legislation or because they've received complaints. The next is people with disabilities, supporting those requesting accommodations who have been denied them and those that are unhappy with inequitable treatment. And lastly, people wanting to do the right thing, those who are already engaged with accessibility. Millie's example taught me that the approach to accessibility must be holistic to be meaningful. I'm sure we've all heard examples where buildings have installed accessible washrooms, but they don't have an accessible entrance. The four flagship services I've created are, one, the Accessibility Matters range. This is a range of package consultancy advice. People don't always understand the service that they want, but they do know what they want as an end result. All of these products have clear deliverables. For example, a one hour meeting to discuss accessibility, a site tour, followed by a 10 page photo report to highlight the barriers. The second service is training related to, there's two aspects with this. The first is in-person training. Usually this is for businesses and it could be something like how to identify and remove barriers in your organization. And the second is around upskilling people to ensure that they've delivered on legislation. But accessibility doesn't just stop after the training session. The aim is to build transferable skills and learn best practices that become part of organization culture. In relation to the second set of services, like I said, these might be in line with the AODA, for example, how to provide accessible customer service. The third service includes legislation and compliance solutions. This could be 
for example, establishing your multi-year accessibility plan. Lastly is the Rick Hansen Accessibility Assessment, where buildings receive an accessibility rating, which is publicly dis displayed. In the next six to 12 months, I have plans to add an additional revenue stream through online courses designed to explain the reasons behind the requirements and support my holistic approach. In terms of customer acquisition, there are four main avenues, direct through the website, those who have a question or have been pipelined by downloading free resources, request for proposals and bids, referrals. This could be someone who has already had an audit done and they want another one done in a different building or B2B recommendations. And lastly is through increasing awareness of accessibility, highlighting the benefits of providing access for all. Red tape got you down. Accessibility compliance is clogging up your inbox. One call does it all. I joke, but we all know the kind of organization that I'm talking about. And this, we are not. There is no silver bullet. When it comes to accessibility and inclusion, we focus on the how and the why, not just the what. In addition to compliance and legislation, we address cultural shift. We offer a holistic approach, not just a transactional one focused on compliance minimums. Having a workforce with conscious or subconscious preconceptions are as much as a barrier is not having accessible entrance to your building. I'm a qualified accessibility consultant and I have a formal education and qualification in accessibility. Lastly, we are dedicated to accessibility. As the saying goes, jack of all trades, master of none. A large number of competitors, accessibility is not their primary focus. They may be an architect or a builder. Because this is my sole focus, meaningful accessibility is my true specialty. Meaningful accessibility and inclusion is centered on the experience, not just legislation. And inclusion can only happen when we all take action. The need for accessibility has never been more pre prevalent. In the next 13 years, the number of Canadians with a disability will increase at double the rate of the population. Millie did decide to speak up at the restaurant and the empathy and compassion Millie received from the staff made her feel that she mattered. Millie felt seen. As the UK comes out of lockdown, this is going to be the first restaurant she's going to eat at. People will forget what you said. People will forget what you did. But people will never forget how you made them feel. Disability is not the problem. Accessibility is. And I'd now like to ask you, EY, how do you want your employees to feel? Thank you all so much for taking the time to listen to my presentation today. Thank you. Well, thank you so much, Jonathan. What a great presentation. Next up, we have Aaron Trottier from Bode Spa for Men. Aaron, the floor is yours for 10 minutes. All right. Hello, everyone. My name is Aaron Trottier, and I'm the proud owner of Bode Spa for Men. Bode has been around for over 17 years, and we are Canada's first and original spa that caters specifically to the grooming needs of men. Uh, today, my goal is to share with you a little bit about why such a business is still needed even today in 2021. And hopefully you'll remember us um, when next time you have to buy a gift for, for a man in your life, or even perhaps for yourself, as a little COVID de-stress. I know that the lockdowns are starting to, uh, to, come, to come down. Bode started with my lovely business partner and romantic partner, Daniel Francoeur. Uh, Dan had a spa named Little House Spa in the 90s, which was out on multiple acres of land just outside Ottawa. And over the years, he saw that more and more men started to feel comfortable coming to the spa. And he sort of saw that, the, that there was a, um, a, a demand in the market for um, for men. And so through years of just chatting with them and interviewing them, he gained enough feedback to be able to build the successful business that we have now. In 2004, Dan acquired Bode Spa in Ottawa. And then in 2015, he and I opened the location in Toronto. Now, before we move any further, I'd like to take a quick moment to explain what is a man mean for us at Bode? Going to the dictionary, good old Mary and Webster, and a man is defined as an individual especially an adult male human. I was really happy when I read that definition because the emphasis is on those first two words, 
an individual. People who come to see us are, are all over the, uh, the range from cisgendered men, we have trans men and trans women, we have non-binary folk, and we even have some cisgendered women who like to come to Bode. So with having said that, why a spa for men then? We all can all, we're all familiar with the idea of female-only gyms, yes? Um, ideally, a gym should be a safe space for anyone to exercise and get a good sweat on. Unfortunately, gyms have become indoctrinated as a male social space. And so a lot of women feel unsafe or uncomfortable or unwelcomed within a gym setting. What we've come to notice over the years of working in spa world, as I call it, is that spa world is the inverse of gym world. It's a female social space that isn't really designed and inviting to men. I could talk for hours about this, um, but to try to keep it nice and short, there are five key factors that are part of the problem. First is a lack of education. Schools have almost no curriculums that have male uh, services uh, that address male concerns. Pair that lack of education with then lack of experience. Students in schools aren't working on male bodies, so they don't have the experience and the comfort to do the services required. That usually then leads to a lot of injuries. And then we are then ignored within the industry, even outside school, meaning we have minimal male representation on promotional materials, equipment and client amenities are usually designed to fit female bodies, not male bodies. Um, many spas don't have a men's menu of any kind. Um, so we're oftentimes left out on the margin ignored. And if we're not ignored, some of us are even treated in a hostile manner. The amount of stories, unfortunately, that we've heard about men, be they cis men or trans men and women who have been denied service, who have been shamed for requesting specific grooming, um, it kind of breaks my heart. And so in spa world, you have to understand is predominantly a female employee as well. So a lot of them are cisgendered women who want to work with cisgendered women. Um, and so of course, then that leads to the last point, Spa world is just ignorant of what men want in general out of their spa services. Um, spas generally have large treatment rooms with um, like a lineup of pedicure chairs. Men don't want to be on display. Men tend to prefer having a private treatment room. They would like to have the comfort of being able to choose whether they have a male or a female esthetician work on them. So what's the solution? We are Bode Spa. Um, we provide education and we also provide experience to all of our staff. All of, any, any, any new therapist has to undergo a multi-month training program with us to make sure that they are competent and comfortable doing the services on men. Our spa is intentionally designed for men, meaning our promotional materials, our equipment, our amenities, and our service menu are catered to what people want. We also foster a safe space by having therapists that are comfortable and competent to do the work. All of our staff want to work on these demographics. And lastly, we meet the expectations of, of our clientele. We don't have communal facilities. All treatment rooms are one-on-one. -on -one. You always have the opportunity to choose a male or a female therapist. And all of our products and services are catered for, uh, for male concerns and male questions. Bode is built on four core foundational values or pillars. And over the years, we just kind of actually realized that it spells out our name, Bode. B is for building relationships. Uh, we're very aware that the work that we do is quite intimate. I mean, I'm literally working on naked bodies, so it's quite personal. So building trusting, uh, vital, you know, trusting relationships is really at the core of what we do. Offering a safe, inclusive space, very important, and I've touched that on the previous slide. Delivering results, we want services and products that work. Um, if you want to foster these building relationships, you need to give clients results. Sure, a, a sensational spa experience feels nice, but results is what gets them to come back. And then education. As men, we receive very little aesthetics-related education. The men in our lives don't really speak to us about stress and mental health, and we're not really taught how to take a break or to communicate when things are not going smoothly. So other than just being a spa, Bode Spa's kind of become like the voice that gets to tell men it's okay to take a moment for yourself. We're the ones that are teaching men, even in their 40s or 50s, how to shave properly for the first time because they never learned how. 
We have teenage boys whose their parents send to see us to trust us with their grooming uh, you know, questions and concerns. And we also have trans men and women who trust us with their grooming uh, because they know that we're a welcoming space. These are some of our most popular services. We do body grooming, facials, massage and body scrubs, and we have uh, foot and hand care. I'll speak about our, about our expert foot care in just a moment. So who's a Bode client? Um, across the wide gamut of, of our clientele, there's sort of three um, clusters, you could say, that we have sort of been able to identify. There's working professionals who want to feel comfortable and confident at work and outside, and they want some stress relief. We have older adults who are seeking, seeking pain relief and relaxation. And they also, whether it's due to mobility restrictions or medical conditions, they require some extra care, particularly with, with nails and foot care. So we have certified master pedicurists who can treat diabetic feet, fungal feet, ingrown nails, um, and really help alleviate some of those difficulties. And lastly, our queer community. We just want a space that's our own and that is welcoming and safe for us to attend. <clears throat> so looking backwards, 2004, Bode Ottawa opened. 2015, Bode Toronto opened. 2019, we started our own essential skincare product line just for men. Then COVID happened. During COVID, um, our goal so far has been to just prepare for reopening. We've been applying for all the different government grants. Um, some of us are taking courses to learn new services, like myself. Right now, I'm just finishing my electrolysis course, which will allow me to work on trans men and women who are undergoing transitions. Uh, I'm building a new web store, and we've recently registered as a CGLCC certified supplier, which I'm proud of. After COVID, I have two goals. One is to generate demand in the market by driving traffic to our website and people back into the spa, and then also continue that product development path. We'd like to try and test market our products in a few spaces and see if we can um, have, have, have distribution extend outside the spa. And in case you're wondering, yes, we are healthy. Yes, we will be reopening after COVID. Bode is not going anywhere. That's a little bit about us. Um, I just want to kind of finish with Bode has been a personal sanctuary to many over 17 years. Dan and I are very proud of the business that we built and we plan on continuing to be its guardians. And uh, although we're branded as a spa for men, we are an inclusive space for all. And I really hope that it, we get to see you or someone that you know and love after this lockdown. Thank you. Thank you so much, Aaron. And you know, I certainly cannot wait to get back to the spa as we uh, <laughs> begin to reopen from COVID-19. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Next up, we have Hassan Kazmi and Kenneth Wong from Lair Inc. Hassan and Kenneth, the floor is yours for 10 minutes. Hi, my name is Ken. And hello, my name is Hassan. Do you remember a time when you were a student at 10 p.m. before your exam the next morning and you were stuck on a question that your entire exam depended on and you needed a tutor right now? Now let us take you through a short video that shows parents facing a similar struggle for their child and how there is a viable solution. Parenting is a balancing act, but sometimes it can cause a panic to see your child suffer in their academics. To help their child excel, parents often start searching for a tutor, but the problem is finding the right fit. With so many countless options, it is confusing to know which is the right fit for the child's learning needs. And that's when the founders of Lair came up with a revolutionary idea of connecting learners with vetted experts. It's like the Uber, but for tutoring. The idea is simple. In the palm of their hands, parents and students can connect and select from thousands of expert tutors conveniently from anywhere at any time. All you have to do is choose your subject, pick your instructor, and book your session. And just like that, you have found a tutor that will offer your child a customized tailored learning plan for success. This individualized and cost-effective learning experience will unlock your child's academic potential. Let's take a look at how. So the key message from that video is that there is a real problem that students and parents face in finding a tutor when needed the most. And before I get into the nitty gritty details about our solution to this problem, I just want to quickly uh, focus on the education industry and show you the key metrics that support the need for a solution. Last year, COVID-19 caused nationwide school closure, impacting 90% of our 1.6 billion enrolled learners globally. But even before the outbreak, the tutoring industry was growing rapidly. 
So according to Forbes market research forecast, it is projected to be worth 100 billion by 2023. And now the new projections are to be worth 350 billion by 2025. That is unprecedented, unprecedented growth. And there has never been a better time than now to tap into this market. And that's right, Ken. There's never been a better time, but it gets even better. In this ever-growing market, our solution tackles a huge need that hasn't been met by those traditional learning centers and ad sites like Kijiji. Speaking of Kijiji, let me ask you all this. Have you any of you ever gone to Kijiji and looked for help? Uh, have any of you ever gone to Kijiji looking for something else? And what are some of the things you noticed when you went to Kijiji looking for help? Slow response times, high tuition rates, poor user interface, back and forth emails with the person. And I mean, why are there millions of different unrelated results for your search? Frustrating, isn't it? Well, so you see, as you can see, what we have been talking about for the past few minutes is that there are frustrating real life problems and we have figured out a solution. But how does our solution tackle these solute issues? Well, to start off with, let's watch a quick trailer and see how the unique benefits of our platform layer provide to our user. Design using the most modern cutting edge technology, Layer is a highly advanced app offering conference of features for a seamless user experience. A student, for example, would simply need to type in the subject they need help with, and by using their current location database, our state-of-the-art algorithm will gain them access to hundreds of qualified experts to match their learning needs. Compare profiles, hourly rates, ratings, and even response times of instructors. And when you find the best match, you can chat with the instructor, swap prep materials, and book a lesson. And for enhanced security future, a unique QR code will be generated for every in-person booking that must be scanned by tutors providing confirmation of that session. And whether you meet online or in person, at Lear, our goal is to help you reach yours whenever, wherever. Let's Lear together. A lot to decompress from here, but if there are three takeaways I can take from this is that our platform allows learners to connect with vetted experts anywhere and anytime conveniently. So all of this sounds great. Visually, everything is appealing. Our trailer looks good, but the proof is in the pudding. So let's take a journey and go back to the example that Ken gave about that student who's struggling at 10.30 p.m. for their exam the next day. I know I've been a student. So what would that student do if they had access to our platform? Let's take a look. Here is a demonstration of what it would look like if the student had access on their mobile data. So they would simply log into Lair. Once that app opens up, they find a tutor and now we don't look for math, we look for a specific subject. In this case, the student is struggling with advanced functions, because let's be honest, functions itself was not hard enough. We had to take advanced. And now when we see advanced, look, there's Lori Benson. She can teach us, she can teach us online, or we can see Lori Benson in local tutors as well. We have filters that we can sort by when we're looking for a tutor. We can do best match, rating, prices, and whatnot. Because it's at 10.30 p.m., I don't want a local tutor coming over to my house. I would rather have somebody teach me online. So I'll go through Lori's profile over here. I see she's willing to um, help me right now. She's available. I'll send her a quick message. I'll type in, help me or I will fail. I fill in all the details that I need to fill in, select the time that I need Lori to help me. Right now would be the appropriate time. Pick, select it, agree to our terms and conditions. I can even go and attach a specific question I need her help with. And then I just send her a message. And boom, I've just sent Lori to help me out. And Lori could be sitting on her desktop, which is on the right side, and she will get a notification all of a sudden that Hassan Kazmi wants to schedule a session with you. So Lori would go in and say, okay, here are the session details. She goes through the session details. She sees that this is something she can teach me. The timing is in half an hour. She can accept the offer. She accepts the offer. And right away, I get the notification and offer is being accepted. And just like that, Lori will teach me that. Tomorrow, I will get my A plus. And we were able to do all of this in just three simple steps. That's all that it takes. So now that we have identified the problem and we have developed a solution, how does this business really make money? I will have Ken talk about the interactions and how the money flows. Ken. So let's talk about a revenue model. It is simple. It's based on two sources of revenue, 
service fee of 3%, which is what we charge a student for accessing our database of expert tutors, and a commission fee of 9%, which is what we charge a tutor for using our platform. So in this example of a three-hour session where the average cost of the tutor is $25 per hour, total cost for the session is $75, of which our service fee of $2.25 from the student's end, and a commission fee of $6.75 from the tutor. Add those fees together, and we get $9 of revenue in our pocket. But that's just one session. So, so what happens when we take it to the grand scale? Hassan, would you like to walk us through it? Absolutely. Well, firstly, guys, we realize having a solution is just the tip of the iceberg. 90% of our economic growth model relied upon identifying the key factors that would bring value to a user experience. So we had to solve the biggest riddle. What comes first, the chicken or the egg? I mean, in our case, do we go after the tutors or the students? And to unsolve this person puzzle, Ken and I made over 2,000 surveys to understand the market and our demographics. And we learned that we must onboard a good base of tutors for our tutor, for our learners to have access to. So before a launch of our platform, we'll be using employer database monster.ca every quarter, outsourcing resumes of 2000 potential candidates with bachelor and master degrees and teaching experience. And by the year one, our target is to have 1200 vetted experts ready to teach and based on our research, we know some of them will teach full-time, part-time, and seasonal, but we do expect our revenue to be $600,000. But just imagine for a second, two to three years from now, as our app gains more traction, as users become more addicted to it, we anticipate that at the end of year three, we'll have a tutor base of 3,600 and a whopping sales revenue of $4 million. But at this moment, we're thinking about a 400% growth, but we have to challenge yourself. How did we come up with that number? It's because our platform is very simple. It allows tutors and learners to connect very, very easily. How do we turn this into a reality? Well, Ken, let's briefly touch on our launching strategy. Definitely. So how do we reach our students and tutors? Val value is created through word of mouth, and we use this mm -hmm. method to recruit our tutors and students by using a referral program. Student and tutor can gain commission-free uh, commission sessions by connecting their network to us. And we think branding is also key by expanding our brand and creating awareness. And we, of course, will be using traditional marketing tools to, uh, to expand our branding. This includes social media, uh, um, develop, developing academic partnership. And, and this business will be successful because we create that word of mouth value to everyone that we connect to. Absolutely. And a business isn't successful without the team behind it. And I want to briefly explain who are these folks that are behind it. Ken and I have been best friends for 10 years. We are two completely different people, but we can work together. I am from finance background. He's a nurse, but he's implemented a lot of new technologies and none of it. And we know it's going to be a success. We have identified the problem. We have understood our people. We have understood the market and we have a plan to make it work. And EY, Thank you for providing us with all the opportunities and we, we will grow from here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Hassan and Kenneth. What a great presentation as well. Our final pitch of the day is Mixologist Bartending, which is owned by Dustin Blondin Lejeune. But presenting today, we have Bellini, and I'm looking forward to Bellini this weekend as well. Bellini, the floor is yours for 10 minutes. Hey, um, it's not letting me share my screen because somebody else is still. Hudson, you're sharing your screen, I think. Yeah. Um, stop sharing, sorry. And before I start, I'd like to recognize the unceded territory of the Okanagan Silks people on which I am currently on. And I will get started here. Okay, hi, so my name is Bellini or Dustin. And I am the owner of Mixologist Bartending. Uh, it is a mobile bar uh, bartending service company that has recently, because of COVID and our pivot, we started an e-commerce store. Okay, 
Okay, and so that was a quick little video of Mixi. Um, that is the bar's name. And so why did I start Mixologist Bartending? Well, a few years ago, I started working weddings at an orchard and I fell in love. From the first one, I knew that this was what I needed in my life, that this is what I needed to do. I love weddings so much. I've been bartending since for almost 10 years now and there's no other place to bartend like at a wedding. Uh, everybody is just so happy in love, there's just so much love in the air. And I needed to do something that is as unique as I am that I could combine all my passions into. I love adding something special to somebody's big day. Um, so special events and how we help. What we do for your special event and how we're different from the competition starts from what we offer, our beautiful mobile bar trailer. We have an alcohol calculator on our website to help walk through how much booze you need. We have um, a video walkthrough for applying for your special event permit. So we have a lot of resources to make sure that everything is as easy as possible for everybody booking with us. Uh, we have an e-commerce store. We have drink bombs to make your event even more unique. And that's something that I will talk about. Um, and what makes us special, we are the only 17 foot fuller bar in the world. Uh, we bring the personality that keeps the party going. We're always having fun. We're break and dance moves behind the bar. We're having great conversations with all the guests. We are like hiring your friend to bartend, but we're professional. Um, it's super easy to book with us. All of our pricing is online. We have everything automated. So you just pick and choose what you want and you it's as easy as that. Just sign a contract and pay your invoice. Uh, we are Canada's only supplier of drink bombs and we are Canada's first and only drag bartending service. Um, during COVID, we have done some virtual events as a bit of our pivot. So uh, from corporate cocktail classes, holiday parties, party boxes for small events where we'll create a box, fill it with drink bombs and other things you need to make a drink, and then even create a Spotify playlist that goes with the theme of your event. So say it's a Spice Girls themed party, we got a ginger cocktail, we got a sporty cocktail, a baby cocktail, a mocktail. Um, and yeah, so uh, who is our target market? So for events, our target market is Mary uh, or Mary and Alex. Um, she is 30 years old. She's from either Kelowna, Vancouver or Alberta. Of course, she's recently engaged and looking to plan her wedding. Uh, she earns 60 to 100K a year. And generally she does hire a wedding planner to help her do a lot of the dirty work. So how do we market for our events? So we, over the past few years have grown quite quickly and we've become uh, the top recommended bartending service at a lot of local venues and then a lot of wedding planners also send people our way um, because we have grown the trust and they know how fun we are and um, yeah we're just we're the top go-to bartending service in Kelowna. We post in all the Facebook wedding groups, we use Instagram religiously, we get a lot of referrals from Instagram Pinterest, of course, there's organic search and then event planning websites like Wedding Wire, The Knot, Gig Salad, etc. And so now onto our e-commerce store. So we, because of COVID, had to figure out a way to continue our business while events weren't uh, going around. So we started an e-commerce store selling one of a kind products uh, that elevate the cocktail experience. So products like drink bombs, cocktail scented candle, drink glitter, rimming sugars, reusable straws, including crystal Swarovski straws, which are unreal. Now here is a quick little drink bomb video. So you just drop it into soda, beer, or champagne, add your liquor, and you've got a cocktail, easy as that. Of course, you wanna add some ice. There's the crystal Swarovski straw. Um, there's 40 different flavors. They're all vegan. They're all organic, gluten-free, nut-free, all the good frees except for cost-free and each ball makes up to two drinks. Um, we also do wholesaling for them. We are the sole Canadian distributor for the My Drink Bomb Company, and that earns us 10% commission per order. We currently have eight locations across Canada, and that is quickly growing. Our e-commerce marketing. So our main sources of marketing are, again, uh, organic TikTok, Instagram, and Pinterest posts. We post a lot in Facebook Marketplace, and that gains a lot of traction. Uh, we've recently been partnering with influencers, local influencers, and 
and that's been growing our sales quite quickly. Uh, we also are on the Bayes online marketplace. We use Google, Facebook, and Instagram ads, and of course our email marketing. So what is our pricing like? So for event bookings, they average between $1,000 and $3,000, depending on how big it is and how many guests there are uh, and whether you want mixy or not. And it's just a small wedding with one bartender and a few hours. It's, it's a few hundred bucks. But if it's 200 people and you want the trailer and you need four bartenders and, and you want all the glassware, all of the all the rentals that we do offer, uh, it can cost upwards of $3,000 to $4,000. Um, the rental of Mixie herself is $750 and that's a full day rental. Our bartenders are $40 an hour and some of our rentals include glassware, lawn games, we have giant Jenga, um, ring toss and cornhole. We have our coolers, there, we have lots of decor, disposables, uh, all consumables except for liquor. So all the mix, juice, garnishes, uh, we make our own syrups. And then we do offer the special event permit if you don't wanna get it yourself. Uh, our drink bomb pricing is, uh, the two pack is $17.99, the four pack is $33.99, six pack is $49.99 and the 12 pack is $69.99. And again, each drink bomb does make up to two drinks. And we also have them as single packs for party favors, which are $9.99 each, and then 48 packs for just throwing a party and using drink bombs at your party without a bartender. And that costs $250. So some reviews we have here, I'm gonna go through this super quickly, pick out my favorite lines. Um, so professional accommodating, showed up early, dressed accordingly, everything but dull. Um, the, it was a tiny wedding and they invited me onto the dance floor. Um, so I, I taught them how to line dance. Um, if my favorite part of any review is if you want class and etiquette, hire this walking holiday. He was incredible. That was from a wonderful groom at a small wedding I had a few years ago. Uh, and then this one is also great. We couldn't imagine a better person for our wedding. Uh, excellent guidance on how much liquor, set up the bar area beautifully, professional, treated the guests well. Um, they invited me not to be shy if there was an opportunity to join on the dance floor. So this is a fairly common theme. Um, I, I engaged in a dance off with their daughter and invited their grandma onto the floor for a slow dance, which she said made her night. And they would have zero recommend or hesitation recommending me to bartend any event. Um, so our projected growth and why so we project to have 50 drink bomb retailers across Canada. This is uh, from the growth that we have currently experienced. Uh, we want to, we expect to have generate 80,000 in gross revenue, which now that the wedding boom is happening is very likely to happen. And then with that revenue, we want to create a second mobile bar for rental. Uh, by the end of 2022, we want 300 drink bomb retailers, 200 K in gross revenue and expanding our mobile bar services to a second city. And then by the end of 2026, we expect to have 1,500 drink bomb retailers across Canada with 1 million in gross revenue and be in a fourth city. And how we're gonna achieve this is to hire a sales team to focus on wholesaling drink bombs using government loans and grants plus private loans to turn our 1975 Dodge D200 pickup into a mobile keg truck, using these loans to increase our marketing spending, creating beneficial relationships with event vendors in Kelowna and other cities, and continuing to use organic social media marketing and local influencers. I would like to thank you for your time today. Bellini, thanks you, and I hope you have a wonderful day. Cheers, guys. Well, thank you so much, Bellini. Uh, that was a really great presentation. And with that, we have reached the end of today's presentations. I just, I just want to take a moment to thank all of our participants today. Uh, Jonathan Marriott from Access Can, uh, Aaron Trottier from Bode Spa, Hassan Kazmi and Kenneth Wong from Lair Inc. And Dustin Blondin Lejeune presenting as Bella Ini from Mixologist Bartending. You are all outstanding and I wish you all the very best of luck as the judges go now to their deliberations. Um, so we've reached the end, but I just want to you know, take this moment to give a huge thanks to Laurie Benson. 
Uh, Laurie is uh, an absolute fantastic leader, a trailblazer, and an amazing support, uh, uh, supporter to CGLCC and all of the work we do here at the Chamber with the community. So on behalf of everyone watching and, and joining us here today, um, I just want to say that we value everything you do. And without you and the fantastic team at, at, the, uh, at EY, um, we wouldn't be able to do this with, uh, without you. So thank you so much, Laurie, for everything you do. It is sincerely appreciated. And as was mentioned earlier on, um, we also have two other people who are crucial to this entire process, Ryan and Paige from Team CGLCC. I am honored to work with you. You do fantastic work. And uh, thank you so much for everything you've done to ensure that this year's competition it was such an outstanding success. Um, a reminder that we will be announcing the winner later on this afternoon as part of the LGBT Plus Excellence in Business and Leadership Awards that is taking place at 2.15 p.m. Eastern. Unfortunately, with any virtual conference, things can go wrong. And we were unable this week to get to our unstoppable talk with Rhea Coach Carey during the week. But I want to share a quick message from the session sponsor, BDC, who are really great partners here at CGLCC. I want to take a moment to play their, uh, their video. So let's take a watch. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us at CGLCC's 2021 Digital LGBT Plus Global Business Summit, New World. My name is Laura Didick, and I am the Vice President of Client Diversity at BDC. We are a proud longtime sponsor of the summit as the Bank for Canadian Entrepreneurs, it's our job to ensure that all business owners have the capital, advice, and tools that they need to succeed. But it's also critical that when business owners work with us, they feel comfortable showing up as their true, authentic self. And we know this isn't always the case, but we're working hard to listen, learn, and take action to ensure all diverse groups know they have a trusted advisor in our team at BDC. I have the pleasure of working with an engaged team of client diversity champions across the whole country who are committed to working with diverse entrepreneurs and to want to help them succeed. We are also privileged to work with a network of like-minded organizations that are also committed to helping businesses thrive. Organizations like the CGLCC, the Canadian Black Chamber of Commerce, We Connect, and many more. So as a first step, I invite you to visit our website, bdc.ca, and check out our Supplier Diversity Program registration page and all the free business tools and resources available to you. I do truly think it is one of our best kept secrets. Thank you so much for that message. That is all we have time for today. A reminder, we will be announcing the winner of the EY Pitch Competition for 2021 later this afternoon as part of the LGBT Plus Excellence and, uh, in Business and Leadership Awards. That is taking place at 2.15 p.m. Eastern, so please mark that down on your calendar. But to close the session, let's hear from BMO, who will be sharing with those instructions on how suppliers can start matchmaking from 12.30 Eastern onwards. And for those attendees who have not pre-registered for, for matchmaking, remember to join our general networking roundtables on the networking tab on the left-hand side of your screen, or visit the many exhibitors in the exhibit hall. So for now, let's take a look at that message. And thank you so much for watching today. Take care and goodbye. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us at CGLCC's 2021 Digital LGBT Plus Global Business Summit, New World. My name is Carol Atak, Senior Manager, Global Supplier Diversity and Sustainability for BMO. BMO is a proud sponsor of the summit and a long-standing corporate partner of CGLCC. At BMO, diversity is one of our core values, and it is these values that enable us to deliver on our vision of being the bank that defines great customer experience. Supplier diversity is a key component of our overall diversity strategy and integrating diverse suppliers into our supply chain aligns us with the goals of our shareholders, customers, and employees. It also aligns to our purpose to boldly grow the good in business and in life. The remainder of today is focused on creating connections, and we all know this is a key part of entrepreneurship. And BMO is working very closely with CGLCC to facilitate these connections. 
You've got three options today. First, if you are a certified diverse supplier who is registered for matchmaking, please head on over to the Zoom call. You should have received this link directly from summit at cglcc.ca. Second, you can head over to the networking tab for CGLCC Connects networking roundtables. There will be a series of topics facilitated by CGLCC partners to chat and connect with other attendees. Lastly, you can head over to the ex exhibition hall to check out some of the booths from participating suppliers and corporations. These sessions will take place between 12.30 and 2 p.m. Eastern and 3 and 4.30 p.m. Eastern with more sessions and awards in between. Thank you all and have a great day.